Um, okay, so we broke the tutorial. Hello, YouTube! I am Lightly Sultan, and welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to the unstable branch of U-Boat. You may remember from the last episode, we had just begun running through the tutorial missions, and we're going to be carrying on with that today. Go ahead and grab the skipper here, talk to the leading officer, and we'll get through some more training. Okay, so in the last episode we covered resupply and travel and diving. Today we're going to be going into crew management. So this training assignment explains the basics of crew management, explain topics include giving direct order to officers, hydrophone usage, torpedo attacks on unescorted freighters, deck gun usage. Okay, estimated duration is 20 minutes. Hello, Skipper. During this training assignment, we will make an attempt to attack the enemy shipping. I will also teach you the basics of crew management. Sounds awesome. Please open the map. You got it. Another U-boat spotted. Sorry, another U-boat reported spotting. A few freighters headed out, headed at Square BF42 a few hours ago. The U-boat was coming back from a mine laying assignment and wasn't armed to attack the ships at any time. Click anywhere to close. I marked a spot where we expect those freighters to be in the near future. Please right-click on the marked point to set a course there. Now, I don't want to do this because in the last episode, allowing the, the game to, to run a path for us killed another U-boat and damaged my boat. But unfortunately, we have to click it to advance. So we're just going to go ahead and right-click it. Um, everything is ready. Now we must undock from the port. To do that, click the highlighted button, select the third engine gear forward. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and throw in some time compression, and I will see you if something comes up. A uh, quick note on um, travel speeds and time compression. Um, so you can see I'm 100 kilometers away from my target, 170 kilometers away from the target. It is now 2.08 in the morning. If I go ahead and speed up, let's say, half an hour's worth, let's get to 2.38. Um, okay, we're now 10 kilometers away. So we're, we just went 200 kilometers in half an hour. Um, yeah, so, so that's a thing. Uh, it's not a bug uh, specific to my game. I ran into this uh, last night as well during uh, Twitch streaming. Um, and I have heard, uh, I've seen others in my Discord uh, talking about this as well. The time compression is broke. So bear that in mind. Uh, it's broken in your benefit in that you are going to go crazy fast to get to your targets but um the thing is is all of your officers their their fatigue levels they operate as if that's not happening so you're going to do like 500 kilometers in an hour and they're going to get as tired as if it took the normal amount of time to get there so their fatigue bars are just going to just dial down on you really really quickly um so it looks like there's some kind of issue in the game engine when it comes to uh, time dilation and compression um, so that's something you want to keep an eye out for. Anyway, back to the game. Very good. We arrived in the area. We should start searching for the cargo ships. Let's take a look inside our ship for a moment. As you can see, the crew is already active and working on various stations on the ship. They know their tasks very well and don't need directions to perform it most of the time. Okay. During long assignments and battles, unusual things tend to happen, though, and your role as captain of this unit is to make necessary adaptations to survive. For this reason, I asked your officers to leave the stations so that we can train micromanagement during the assignment. Okay, I like this. This is good. So it's not just allowing you to do the set and forget thing. It's actually forcing us to learn how to micromanage the boat. That's good. We must locate the cargo ships we are looking for. The best way to accomplish that is the onboard hydrophone. It's capable of detecting ships from tens of kilometers, much farther than it's possible by sight, even in the best weather. The hydrophone installed in your ship doesn't work on the water surface, though. We must submerge the periscope depth before we subs before we proceed. Fantastic. Good to know. Once again, dive times are very, very much improved. Okay. Hydrophone can be manned by any trained officer, but radiomen's excel. Select Hans Jürgen Osterman, your radioman, before we proceed. You got it. Now click on the listening room to assign him there. Okay. Come on, Mr. Osterman. You and me, buddy, like old days. Okay. Now what? Oh, here we go. Uh, he hears the ship propellers through the hydrophone. Good. Click on the contact using the right, sorry, right mouse button to plot an interception course. Fantastic. Okay. This would be an excellent time, I feel, to talk about um, blue lighting yet again, because we're not at blue lighting. We're just burning through our oxygen. That would have been a good time to bring it up. Uh, it also has not mentioned the fact that if I use helpers with my radio men, that we will extend the range of our hydrophone. 
you know, there's some stuff, there's some advanced stuff, I guess you could call it, in there that I would have liked to have seen uh, for a mission about about using it. Also, it would be really beneficial to have a little bit of a how-to on how to manually use the hydrophone. Um, that's something that uh, even us folks who have been around a long time, we're still more or less sure how it works, but not 100% sure how it works. So it would have been nice right here and now for them to go, this is how it works in first person mode. That would be great. But you know what? I, I you know, they're making a tutorial at the base level. Maybe there'll be an advanced tutorial someday. That would be helpful. It also hasn't told us that if we slow down, the circle will get bigger. It hasn't really talked about the fact that our own noise sort of defeats the hydrophone in a way. All right, according to the map, I should have sight on it already and I don't. So that leads me to believe that uh, the detection issues present in 127 could still be here. Because according to the game, it is now within my my area of hearing, let's call it. My, my audi audible zone. And I still don't have it. And it's also pointing me off in this direction somewhere. A um, little worried about that. One eternity later. Officers are getting sleepy. Here we go. Okay. Transport SL spotted. I'm not... Okay, I don't really know what that means. Uh, Skipper, can we call that in, please, real quick? All right, let's see what the game does to uh, to explain to us how to do this, I guess. Okay, so we had to bring it in within visual range. Uh, a sailor using the periscope as spotted the freighter. We can attack it now. Good. The most effective weapons are the torpedoes. 280 kilogram warhead. Aside from the sheer power, they may rip a ship apart. Or sorry, that may rip a ship apart. They usually do not reveal your position to the enemy. It's your primary weapon. Okay. To use them, we first need to compute a course for the torpedo. Please select Klaus Hagnow. All right. Now send him over to the attack periscope in the conning tower. Okay. It didn't tell me to give him any helpers, so I'm going to take those away. Uh, having the officer selected, click the enemy cargo ship using a rice mouse button to order computing a torpedo course at it. Uh, that's a pretty clunky sentence. Uh, okay. Alright, so... It's telling us how to do automatic calculation. We should give him some time to do that. I will give you further directions once that's done. So, it's told us to lock on with our leader on the attack periscope. It has not told us that we can also lock on with our radio operator. Our hydrophone operator. Um, that's kind of important to know. Like, we could have locked on to... See, now we can't even see him, period. So now his his computing level is, is garbage. Okay, how would I do this then? Um, yeah. So we could have had Mr. Osherman working on this, uh, on this solution way on back down here. And we'd probably have most of it calculated by now if the game had thought to tell us about it. Um... It's, it's only having us use visual cues to, to do any detecting, so I, I, that's a little weird. Plus, I mean, I could put the skipper on the observation scope and get a solution even faster. So, I feel like some stuff is missing in translation here. Um, we are running out of air, so I'm going to go ahead and take the wheel, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to rejig this so that it goes much, much faster for us, because it makes no sense... Um, to not do that. Okay, and we'll get the skipper on that as well. All right, 7%. This is gonna go so much faster with these three officers working it. I don't know why they wouldn't have told us to do that in the first place. We could also uh, give helpers to these guys and speed it up a little more, but again. All right, is it gonna steer me right into the side of it? Like we're a kilometer away. So it's not telling me to slow down. It's not telling me to stop. It's not telling me to keep parallel. All right, listen, game. I'm gonna have to take over here because this this tutorial per se is not um, not exactly the best. Uh, Mr. Hagnell managed to prepare a decent torpedo course solution. It's time to launch the torpedoes. Okay, so at roughly 90, 91 percent, the game registers this as a as a likely solution. Now, click the highlighted button to open the torpedo launcher interface. Okay, click on at least three launchers to flood the tubes with seawater. Okay, this is, an, this is the Empire Labrador? What is she? She... This is an NA-1. Oh my god, the game wants me to use three torpedoes on an NA-1. Okay. Alright, game, you got it. Let's flood three tubes. Let's go. 
flooded three tubes for this NA1. Oh, man. Okay. I get it. I get it. The game is just trying to tell, tell me how to play. Okay. Fire, Captain. You got her, buds. Let's do it. It would have been fun right then and there for them to talk about the speed, depth, and dispersion. That would have been pretty important, I think, to cover. Uh, at least to gloss over. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like... I feel like there's a lot missing from this this scenario right now. But there you go. We're gonna... We're gonna... <laughs> we're, ju we're just doing what the game wants. So let's go ahead and close this. And if we, if the calculation is correct from the crew here, we're basically going to annihilate this target. So that's one. That's two. That's three. Ooh, that's a terrible sound. My God. Well done, Captain. This freighter is finished. I would say, I would say it's finished. Good God, man. Oh, we blew her in half. Original report mentions uh, mentioned two freighters heading in this area. The second one may also be around. Okay, so maybe the game is going to tell us a little bit more about what we're supposed to do. Let's come back to the surface and look around. Click the highlighted buttons. Clickety. Clickety. Okay. Leave this view, please, because my God, what a terrible noise. Okay. So now we're looking for a second freighter, apparently. We need to uh, call this in. It would have been nice for them to tell us to call that in. It's very important, because if you don't, you don't get your points. So, okay, game. Um, so we were supposed to be heading in this direction, so I guess I'll help the game out a little bit. Uh, whoops. Select Klaus Hagno again. Damn, okay, so we can't go to bed. Send him to observe the surroundings. All right, so we're going to go use the uh, UZO. This would also be a great time for them to tell me to add helpers so that he can find something. Oh, here we go. Perfect. Oh, wow. Did I ever call it? Awesome. Let's assign him some help. Okay. Boop. Your crew is composed from the officers like Officer Klaus Hagnow, but also regular sailors. Officers take direct orders from you, and you have a direct c control over them. You can find the portraits of them in the bottom right part of the screen. Regular sailors usually followed automated schedules, as they, are, as they are too numerous to take orders from the captain one by one. They can also aid officers in their work. That's exactly what we need right now. Each officer has a few bars next to his portrait. They represent sailors assigned to the officer. Yes, that's true. Nope, oh, chimney smoke spotted. That's good. All right, the game hasn't told me anything. We'll just report it back in, I guess. And I guess maybe it's expecting me to, to, to put what I've learned into action here, and we'll set a, uh, an, an intercept course for her. I, I think at this point it's saying, I've told you how to do it once, so you should be doing those things. Which is fair. It's perfectly fair. Second cargo ship, let's get ahead of the second freighter. Click on the marked point using the right mouse button. Okay. The freighter already spotted us, but it seems to be unarmed. Oh, <laughs> So no no information about checking it for armament beforehand. We're just gonna we're just gonna plow on in there and hope like hell. Okay. Select officer lightly salted. You got it. Send him to the deck gun. You got it. Just give him some help. Or no, the game didn't tell us to give him help. Let's hold off. We're gonna hold off. Got another NA1. They're gonna be super squishy. Um, I have noticed, uh, by the way, as a quick aside. Your HE rounds at least do way more damage than they did in 127. Like. Pretty much a mini torpedo level of damage. Uh, yesterday I shot an Empire twice and it sank. So <laughs> that's that's saying something. Now click on the freighter using the right mouse button to order lightly salted to fire at it. Oh, we're gonna use automatic mode. Okay. Okay, so it's not gonna tell you to. to uh, it's not gonna teach you how to do this manually. There you go. We knocked the nose off her. Oops. Um, shoot, I turned off the UI, and now the game is stuck. Um, okay, so we broke the tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that has more to do with the fact that it's the unstable branch than anything else. Um, yeah. Okay, so I reloaded, redid the mission, same as before. Uh, it doesn't give you any extra information, and we've sunk the NA-1, the second NA-1. Um, we can come back to port at any time now. Okay, so that is the end of it right there. That's that's everything in a nutshell of what they're going to tell you to do. 
All right, so with that being out of the way, we can see if they'll pilot us a proper course back home. It sort of looks like they have. I'm going to go ahead and throw in some time comp, and I will see you shortly. So that was the, um, that was the management slash t uh, torpedo solution tutorial, I guess. Um, I feel like it was a little lacking, not going to lie. What's missing? Um, a few things. This was apparently the crew management tutorial. Uh, it didn't get into crew management at all. So it told me that I can use additional sailors on my officers, but we didn't we didn't touch the screen in any way. In fact, we're still two um, two sailors light. Uh, it didn't even tell us to fill our boat. So there's that. Um, it got around to finally telling us that we could put people onto our officers, but not in such a manner that it, it makes us understand that it's much more effective to do that right from the get-go. Um, it did not give us any indication uh, of how to manually calculate a target. It didn't give us any indication on how to use the statometer, how to use the angle on bow. It didn't tell us to warm up the torpedoes beforehand. Um, yeah. It didn't tell us how to, if, we, if you are going to go the automated calculation route, it didn't tell us that we can put three officers on that calculation. So what do I think overall? I think that there's a lot missing um, from that aspect. I'm, I'm honestly pretty disappointed. I thought that, at the very least, the game would tell me how it, how it expects me to use that AOB tool, uh, because I've always had one heck of a time trying to figure that thing out. Um, so, so to not even have that, uh, not even the basics of using the statometer, of using the periscope in general, that was not apparent in any way. That's really, that's not an oversight. That's that's just terrible. That should it shouldn't be that way. It, um, the game is not giving you enough information to use the tools that are readily available. So if you put, if you go ahead and put Klaus on the attack periscope, and you open up the periscope because you'd like to see the target, there's going to be all these tools. And yes, each tool sort of tells you how to use it, but the game didn't even tell me that I could use those tools. It didn't even give me the, the slightest hint that they even exist. Uh, so far, it hasn't even told me to use the periscope other than just assigning an officer to it. So I'm very, very disappointed in this aspect. Um, I guess overall, on a scale of uh, 1 to 5, I would give it a 2. It gives you the absolute bare necessities to allow the game to do all the work for you, but it doesn't tell you how to play it. So, yeah, not super pleased about that. I understand, again, I'm not a, I'm not a game developer. I, I don't do this for a living. Um, I, just, I just make tutorials for U-Boat uh, and, and play some games. Um, but I really feel like a lot more was needed there. And I didn't see in the list of the upcoming tutorials that any of that is going to be available. Like, it's not readily, like, hey, look, we're about to do this. Like, maybe it'll come up in the, in the patrol, but I don't know. I, I just don't know. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end, uh, end the episode here. Uh, we're going to get into the rest of the tutorials next time. If you enjoyed the content today, uh, feel free to hit like, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and until next time, I have been Lightly Salted. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now. <laughs>